Um, what just happened? Hello everyone. I thought I'd do a quick video today to um, just re to react, I guess, to the uh, incredible game of football we just saw. I don't know if, if you haven't watched the game, do yourselves a favor. Go watch the last quarter. Uh, you can watch the highlights, but I think the last quarter will give you a better indication of just how wild that game was between Essendon and Port Adelaide with Dan Houston pulling off one of the most clutch things I've ever seen on a football field, and I go for the Eagles. Port Adelaide notch, uh, a really important win, I think, um, for a few reasons. Obviously, they're now uh, reaffirmed their two-game buffer at, in second on the ladder, so top two is looking increasingly likely, but... Obviously, it, it, it gains a little bit of breathing space for them, or at least retains it. Um, but most importantly as well, I, I've been talking about um, interstate sides winning at the MCG as being critical indicator of how much of a of a you know premiership contender they are. I've, I've had that conversation around Brisbane. I've had it with you know West Coast in the past. I, I made the point against about Adelaide recently when they took on the Pies. With Port Adelaide, that question mark was still a little bit there when you consider I think it was round two. Obviously, their performance against Collingwood didn't go to plan. But since then, obviously, it is a new Port Adelaide. They had that 10-point win over Richmond. Sure, that's great. And I was really excited for these contests between them and Essendon because uh, I really respect Essendon as a good quality side. And I think we saw that. That game demonstrates two good, gritty sides going at it in unreal conditions. And it was actually an entertaining game. Obviously, the, the wet weather, the torrential rain often isn't conducive to entertaining footy. But geez, it was good old-fashioned sluggish footy. So yeah, to come up against Essendon, a side that I think has gone real well this year in terms of their progress from last year at least. To notch up that win in clutch circumstances like that is another massive tick for Port Adelaide. They're just enhancing their resume and their credentials as a premiership contender this year and I think it's finally clicked for them. It's undeniable now. They could genuinely win the flag this year and that's uh, not an insignificant thing to say when you consider you know how good Collingwood is. Geez, what a last quarter though. Um, you know, It got to about 17 points. It was a close game throughout it was like five points at quarter time five points at half time I, I forget the specifics but Essendon got up to a nine point lead uh, by three quarter time and a couple of gold buffer in a game like that is uh is worth its weight in gold to be honest so when it flipped in that last quarter and Port Adelaide got away and kicked uh you know how many they kick in a row I'm not sure but might have been four in a row to start the last quarter they got out to a 17 point lead um Essendon looked dead and buried and they have their own resurgence couple of moments, really tough, gritty moments stand out, particularly from Zach Merritt. I think uh, he was probably one of the best of field in this game. He had no right of bringing down Aaliyah Aaliyah for that holding the ball tackle. When you consider the height and weight difference, absolutely massive effort. A few, you know, botched, you know, mark attempts um, obviously cost Essendon at times, I felt. But obviously, with, with the conditions, you can't really blame them for that. They still gave it their all. And when Caldwell kicked that goal at the end of the game, uh, and then obviously Parrish had that shot and missed, it really felt like Port Adelaide had run out of shots. In hindsight, it would have been better if that parish uh, behind had actually gone out of bounds. It probably would have changed the result, to be honest. But sure enough, uh, Trent McKenzie sends it literally to halfway. Port Adelaide strive forward. Dan Houston takes an intercept mark for about 52 meters, I reckon, by the time he'd actually marked it. The siren goes, Ken Hinckley's got this little smile on his face, and I think surely at this point he's just embracing the fact that they're probably going to lose. But Dan Houston has this knack for long-range goals, doesn't he? And what a clutch goal that was. It was not an easy set shot by any stretch. On a 45-degree angle, probably even worse than that. Goes to a goal review. It's clearly a goal, and Port Adelaide get uh, an incredible victory. I think I made a point in a recent video about Port Adelaide and the way they play and, and how they can impact from having way less of the ball. And that was true in this game. They had uh, you know 50 less disposals, I think, um, but their ability to convert those opportunities and make them count is just about second to none in the competition right now. It felt like at times in the last quarter, Essendon had the, the, the grunt, the inside work. They were winning contested ball when it counted, um, but they couldn't quite do anything with it. And when Port Adelaide got those little opportunities, they really made them count. I was going to make a video recently called we should have seen Port Adelaide coming and I may maybe I, I will still because obviously they had a couple of years where they were in the prelims uh, in 20 and 21 and then in 22 the ass fell out of the team and you know they started 0-5 sort of resurged a little bit but there is a bloody good team under the layers here and we probably should have seen it coming look at the you know the mix of that talent you know Zach Butters has been uh, on the verge of being an elite player for a number of years now Connor Rosie obviously is a star Jason Horn Francis as well was contributing pretty well to that team Finn Lacing comes in as a role player Aaliyah, Aaliyah, they're just strong all over the ground. I feel like 
Port Adelaide being a good side, I felt like I thought it was possible this year and I had them in my eight, but I did not predict them to be arguably the best side in the competition, if not close second. So Port will won 12 in a row, um, and that is a really big achievement in the, the modern game that doesn't happen you know, so often. And it feels like the stage is set for a Collingwood Port grand final. I don't want to go too early because, you know, how many times have we predicted a grand final in June and uh, or July today? And everything's a, a different ball game in finals, but we are seeing an experienced side that can win at the G against quality teams can win in tough conditions they've got match winners Connor Rosie probably gets three Brownlow votes for his three goals 23 touches and nine tackles again a great blend of forward now inside capability outside class as well all the ingredients are there for Port Adelaide it's uh it's fantastic so I just wanted to get it off my chest because I literally I think I squealed I was watching this in my room I'm hungover as hell today uh but it was still got a lot of excitement out of me so hopefully we see a similar effort by the Eagles tomorrow when we take on Secura but anyway guys let me know in the comments what you thought of the game uh what you agree with what you disagree with and i will see you in the next video cheers